All right, awesome. So let's get a little bit into um, some of the uh, SEO topics you wanted to discuss. Um, and you've been in the SEO space, like I said, probably over 10 years now, and you've seen how search has changed over the years. Um, so what are your some high level thoughts around how search has changed, what are concerns you have, or anything you wanna talk on that topic? You know, something that I have been thinking about uh, is of course, you know, when I first started, all the Google ads were marked in yellow. Um, and there was this, you know, uh, kind of widely known stat. Well, there's that statistic about with advertising, you know, half of my marketing works. I just don't know which half, right? With, with, uh, Google, uh, in the early days of, of ads, you know, half people just will not click and scroll right through. So it's like, okay, now with Google changing and making it almost invisible to see what an ad is, uh, are people aware of it being an ad or not? And how does that change kind of click through rate behavior? So I think that's a whole um, interesting topic. And of course we have all these technologies, both in terms of what you can build from a web platform perspective, and of course how you're actually kind of building a marketing uh, growth organization that le leverages the latest uh, technology. So. So obviously, yeah, the old, I remember like the old SES conferences, um, I forgot who, some company came out with this called like the search triangle or the golden triangle where we would basically measure, do eye studies to measure ad blindness in the search results. And generally people would skip over the yellow search ads um, and then click on the first one or two search organic search results. I haven't seen a recent study on this, maybe I missed it uh, about measuring are people blind to the ads? I assume they're not, um, meaning Google's history around the ad spot, or at least the ad label has been that Google was showing, making the ads more, more and more like the actual organic list, things blending them in more so people will click on them more. Now, if you go to the mobile results, you, which most people do, they search on mobile, they go to google.com on their iPhone or Android, all they see on the first fold without scrolling are ads. Um, so the ad blindness, I'm sure there's tremendous, tremendous amount of clicks on the uh, paid ads, probably lesser clicks or fewer clicks on the organic results. Um, is that an issue? I mean, obviously- Well, I just think uh, people need to really have, have an awareness and especially- Search marketers or yeah. average searcher? Yeah, uh, so search marketers that you know people are probably uh, not getting to your content in the same way. So how do you deal with that? Do you kind of go wider, kind of increase your URL footprint? Right. Uh, is one way to do that. Basically right. saying the longer the, key, the keyword phrase, the less likely well, it is. Well, uh, is that what you're saying? Like the less likely no, it is or no? Well, that's true to, to a degree, but um, it just kind of go beyond your main keyword space. Okay. Uh, and get in front of more SERPs is kind of one way to kind of tackle and, that. And that's based on understanding searcher intent and the searcher behavior as they're going through the buying journey? Yeah, it's just, uh, I guess, if if the Mac, if you're operating your SEO, thinking that, oh, okay, we're gonna get a solid 30% click-through rate, you know, for all that stuff, right? Right. Then um, changes happen, et cetera, uh, time passes, then uh, now you're getting to 10% of that. Okay. What do you do? Do you just keep going back, you know, spinning your wheels in that zone there? Or do you kind of iterate out with your content, kind of getting more lateral coverage in? As long as that converts, obviously. Well, of course. Right. Uh, of course. So, so it, I guess in the cheap flight situation, not just cheap flight city, but also like, I'm stressed out at my job, I need a vacation type of content. <laughs> Like it's that type of stuff, or I need a rental car, or looking at all ways why people might search for travel to a certain location and building content around that. Maybe is that what you're kind of implying? Yeah. Well, the, the travel space is is very right. saturated. Right. Of course. Uh, but yeah, no. For for other kind of verticals, um, it's easier. Okay. Right. So in SEO, we have obviously search mark. Well, we have marketing, search marketing, SEO, paid. And within paid, you might have like Google shopping ads, merchant center, um, 
all different various it's Google Discover ads and SEO. Obviously, you have your whole flow. So and slew of stuff. Google Discover is interesting, uh, and of course, there's Google News. But with uh, Google Discover, it's crazy how there is such a variability. Uh, in like all of a sudden, there's a lot of clicks. Then it just goes away. Um, I have seen. I forget uh, who wrote some of these uh, articles, but the uh, text uh, analysis of the headlines okay. of Discover, how kind of certain uh, patterns there get out um, right. more, which is I'm interesting. I remember who it was also. I don't think it was Brody Clark, although he does a lot of Discover. Glenn Gabe does a lot of Discover discussion, oh. but it might have been more on the news oh, well, side. I think it may have been Lily Ray. Um, Could have been she, Lily Ray. Yeah, she, uh, I think, has a lot of Discover stuff. Right. And also John Chiata does a lot of that on the news mm -hmm. publisher side. Yeah, Discover is amazing. Um, I just can't bank on it. You can definitely not say, you know, I'm going to expect my traffic to come from Google Discover because sometimes you, like one week you get a huge amount of traffic from Google Discover mm -hmm. and then the next five weeks you get nothing. Um, and there's no necessarily rhyme or reason on that. Although John Chiata has done some really big studies on that, I think, and probably Lily Ray as well. So we should definitely look into that more. Um, so we got the, you know, obviously we're concerned about... Um, ads kind of taking over the space and we as SEOs have to kind of think about how we can diversify a little bit of our traffic uh, in search by looking at more around, you know, like you said, expanding, um, I guess, our search terms or search intent visibility. And what else has been changing in the space in terms of, I know you're obviously in the software space, so um, what, what other topic do you want to talk about? Agency? Do you want to talk about tools in terms of what's changing in the space? Yeah, well, you know, uh, tools and, you know, SEO tooling, PPC tooling, you know, I think it's the future state setup is, is still to be built. Yes, some in, some in-house teams may have some systems that have really been working. Right. Uh, but a lot of teams do not, right? And you could spend your resources building something from scratch, uh, or you can take advantage of best in class technology that is you know our, our founder and ceo anurad singhal uh he led uh engineering at realtor.com you know 100 plus million pages uh tens of millions of mo uh, monthly organic clicks right. so we're building for uh you know enterprise scale uh and you know on our uh, data science team you know, we do have academics uh, in natural language processing and AI to really uh, streamline the build of uh, all of these AI machine learning systems. That's going to really, you know, cause a bit of a shift into the best activities that brands can take to meet their goals from a web acquisition perspective. You know, I think I may have mentioned this uh, in our conversation, but a recommendation engine, SEO recommendation engine, all of this technology in AI, one of the main kind of outputs of it is some type of recommendation engine with, with a prediction of, you know, a best 80% yes or no. Right. It's not 100%, but it's a solid 80%. So these are your top 10 pages that you should be working on. All of the pivot table calculations and measurement has already been done. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's moot. So start optimizing. Don't try and figure out what to optimize. You know, think about how much time is spent. Oh, what should we be working on? The, the best technology should never leave that to, to have that as a, as a question. Right. You know, it should be, uh, you should have a backlog of things that you should be doing, not spending time you know, trying to you know, figure out what to do, unless of course you're starting new and right. there are circumstances where that's appropriate. But um, those I think are some interesting things to keep right. in mind. Like, I mean, it's interesting going back to like, the history of like, SEO tooling and SEO tools and search marketing tools. You had the early, early tools were basically just tools to see where do, you, where do I rank? It right. was like, uh, I think position, web position gold it was like the first big SEO tool set. I think there was a, a lot of history around that with terms of like scraping Google and Google suing them and stuff like that, I believe. I look up on, on Wikipedia to make sure. Uh, and then the tools got more sophisticated. They started using APIs, they started giving you keyword trends, keyword volume, 
and then giving you more sophisticated stuff around how can I improve my SEO by crawling your own website, giving you suggestions around metadata or keyword density and all this other stuff, and then even more, more and more uh, tooling in terms of like um, where your areas of issues are, not just structured data, but other things. And now it's like we're at this point where um, not only are the tools giving us suggestions based on this AI information, but potentially actually um, implementing those changes for us. Exactly. Different, different techniques and then measuring those implementations using A-B testing, SEO split testing, and then pulling that data back into the AI models to actually make better decisions going forward. Those are all robust data pipelines, ETL pipelines uh, that can be built yeah. uh, and are being built. Yes. Um, to take care of a lot of that. So yeah, you know, what to test can be automated to identify implementing or, you know, having the test to run and then the processing of the test results. Um, but again, there's a downfall with that. If it's built in correctly, uh, teams can be stuck testing the wrong thing right. for a very long time until it can be debugged. Um, and, uh, so yeah, that I think is a huge risk with these kind of immature systems. Um, not to say that there are, but it's just there, those are the risks. Right. Um, yeah. It's funny because Google always have historically said around using machine learning and search that they use it for very, very specific areas, but they don't use it for everything because once it starts to run off by itself, it's hard to debug where it went wrong. It's, it's literally a black box. Yeah. All of the AI technology. Once it gets to a certain point, you cannot, um, yeah, it's just based off of the deep learning network calculations, that is the output. Yeah, right? then we have the matrix um, and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so that is certainly, you know, it's gonna be a very interesting uh, kind of journey, you know, as we're into this inflection point. Um, and then, you know, coming out on the other side, all, uh, you know, hopefully leveraging this technology and not um, just kind of dashboards, downloading CSVs just for the sake of doing it. Right. Um, you know, there there's ways to have a lot of kind of impact with any website. And sometimes that, in terms of business impact, and sometimes that uh, does mean to actually throttle back the SEO standard practice and kind of, you know, I like to uh, talk about, um, and this comes from McKinsey, you know, it's a framework in, in management consulting, uh, the horizons framework, three, three horizons of, of growth. You know, at some point, you know, you have to plan, and I'm sure large, you know, um, enterprise SEOs are, Think about this, that at some point Google can do a penalty and you've lost half your traffic. Right. And you can't do anything. Right. You know, I, you know, I, I, you know at Skyscanner and, and other places I've, I've uh, consulted with, you know, we've had, it's, not, it's, not, it's more like a thought experiment. It's like, oh, okay, Google just de-indexed our site. What do we do next? Right. So you have kind of a fire drill with the marketing channels. Um, and then that's like, okay, well, what are other acquisition channels or platforms uh quora reddit pinterest um they have tens of millions if not more monthly active users a lot of those platforms get a lot of traffic from search right like 10 to 20 percent of their monthly users uh come from google right so if you can get in between there find those pages on those other platforms that appear in google which I think you could do by SEMrush. If you do it in Ahrefs, I think it breaks. Uh, Quora.com. Uh, but you can find your keywords uh, and see which pages are actually ranking on page one right. for those. And then you can whitelist, um, at least in Quora, you can whitelist uh, the questions uh, from right. an ad product. And of course, you can do some organic um, optimization as well. It's interesting. So you like, instead of diversifying um, Google search traffic, because Google search is probably not going away, you're diversifying the source that you get that traffic from, from exactly. Google search. So if it's not the first click, it could be the second or third click from Google search. Exactly. So I like to think of, uh, you know, 
or I'm trying to kind of visualize here, but think of a marketing funnel. Um, like on the far left is literally uh, all of your uh, market de demand. Right. Uh, and so, you know, all that is, or a good portion is going into Google. Uh, some people are going direct. Right. And you always want more and more. And yes, there are other platforms people go to outside of Google, yes. like, like Bing, or those are search engines. Um, but essentially, um, you know, okay, if your site can rank in Google, but so can these other platforms, right. and you could be there. And then, of course, there's uh, display advertising and affiliate site uh, yes. kind of uh I guess you could call that capture, where you're identifying kind of the market share sites for keyword space and a quarter, we're calculating market share very granular with all of your keywords across ads, Google Search Console in a data lake. So basically, you see this a lot when it comes to um, large organizations that you see there's a huge amount of money being spent on affiliate marketing and display advertising on third party websites. Yes. So if you search for your own keyword that you rank number four for, but then you see a review site or some type of industry website ranking above you, you could then go to them and pay them either on an affiliate basis or on some type of display ad basis or something to put your your ad there or to put your listing there. That's a huge a huge amount of money. In fact, a lot of exactly. these companies create their own review websites without telling anybody. There's no like about disclaimer that, I don't know, some big brand name creates a third party website that looks completely independent of them, but yet lists all the competitors and them at the top. Um, and that's a huge business. We see it all the time. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, uh, thanks for reminding me. Uh, yeah, it's like you, you can calculate, okay, these are your competitor sites. You can't really do much with that. But hey, these are sites that you could outreach to. Right. From a uh, affiliate uh, or um, you know, a, like a banner, uh, yeah. display and just there could be an influencer right uh kind of a marketing site that you can um join uh so that's where you can have and th this is where too um when you do have a very valuable serp you know and kind of keyword space uh th that's where you do want to do that extra effort to check okay if you are bidding on ppc and you do have a decent seo ranking right. Who else is on page one and could you get involved on that site somehow? Right. Um, either display ads or uh, something else. I like that. I like the topic of diversifying yourself, not within search, but on multiple domain properties, which is something that a lot of sophisticated SEOs think about constantly. And not just diversifying yourself outside of search with like Facebook ads or Reddit ads or TikTok ads or whatever it might be. Or even LinkedIn. Um, but obviously those are all the channels that you can look into. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. All right. So is there anything else you wanted to discuss? or uh, No. Covered all? Uh, just, of course, uh, check out uh, quarter.com. Yeah. Uh, we have a great uh, test drive experience. Uh, so if you want to uh, play around with the, the technology, uh, quarter.com. Just to be completely clear, this was not sponsored. No payment was exchange for this although maybe some da just joking <laughs> um how can people learn more about you specifically or follow you or yeah uh james f gimmons on linkedin twitter uh and uh feel free to reach out he's the guy in the spectacles on in twitter <laughs> that. anyway thank you so much for being here i appreciate it my pleasure